So very lucky uh, today to have a very special guest. We've got commentator, uh, motivational speaker, World Cup winner, and most importantly, a lady with incredible biceps. Uh, welcome, Kat. Yeah. Uh, thanks for having me on. Uh, how was that as an intro? It's pretty good, eh? Yeah, that's pretty good. I, I always appreciate a good bicep chat. So uh, yeah, all good. Yeah. So that's actually, I guess, what initially kind of drew me to you. So um, I was aware of you anyway as a, an England World Cup winner. Uh, obviously amazing rugby career but it was actually just watching uh one of the games this weekend saw you in commentary great commentary these these glorious biceps like we, we need to have a conversation so uh thank you for, for joining yeah. the podcast so quickly yeah no, yeah it's a good idea like rugby biceps done yeah, yeah done, done indeed um so let's talk a little about a little bit about you so if we kind of go through your background we kind of really get to know you your business and where you're going and then we'll give you the uh the famous quick fire questions and put you under a bit of pressure if that's all right yeah, that's fine. Good. Yeah. So, shall we start with rugby? What made you kind of get into rugby in the in the first place? Um, well, I always used to. My dad uh, used to make us go as a family to go and watch Gloucester uh, rugby um, play, and he'd always kind of wanted one of his daughters to kind of play it. And he tried to make my older sister play, and she literally someone came to tackle her, and she just handed them the ball. She was like, "No, I'm not having this." So he's like, "Okay, I'll try the next one." And um, because I did gymnastics, I was kind of um had a good strength base so yeah. then when I went and tried rugby I loved it um it, it, the, it really translated across and so um yeah he took me along to an under 16s Worcester uh, session when I was about 13 14 and uh, that was it then twice a week every weekend playing like I was absolutely kind of hooked and when you started were you going straight in was it a, a kind of a girls team at the time or was it was it like a mixed uh, no, so it was um girls team because I think it was uh, anything uh, over tw 12, I think, was yeah. um, separated. Yeah, so I went straight into a girls team. Um, I remember actually one of my first sessions, I don't even think I'd learned to tackle before. So one of my first games and um, someone basically ran over me in my first game. I didn't really know what I was doing. And it turned out that was Maggie Alfonsi, who obviously really? later along the line I played yeah. with and stuff like that. <laughs> like, boy, so she's up there. Yeah, no, she's got insane biceps. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so I just loved it, really. I loved that um, it was really accepting. And some of the friends that I met then, I'm still friends with now, like all these years later from like a, you know, a cold session at Worcester when we're 13 years old. So yeah, it's great. I just love the sport and how, um, yeah, accepting it is and how just you make just friends for life. Absolutely. And so before you started at Worcester, you then got the big call up to, to England, which is amazing. And then that accumulated in was it am I right in thinking your last ever game was a World Cup win yeah it was a World Cup final it was my last game um, yeah, was... I know it was a, a premature and I think we should we should talk about that but it was a premature yeah. end of the career but yeah what a way to finish a career yeah it, I mean not many people and I think this is a thing not many people retire on their own terms and it probably was um you know because I was 28 and in my prime I probably had realistically four more years I think i um, playing at kind of a good level because I was still you know, I got selected into the first professional contracts for seven. So it would have been, you know, gone down that route. Um, but also, yeah, the last game being that there's no kind of you can't finish on kind of a better high. So, um, yeah, definitely an awesome game to bow out on. Did you, um, did you get injured in that final game? I went off no so I basically I had um I've had problems with concussions yeah. um for a while and before the world cup in fact I wasn't sure I'd get back um I had quite a bad knockout where I had seizures and um conv or convulsions and so it just wasn't clear it took me four months to kind of get back to playing and um and just throughout the whole world cup it sort of I had to just Put it to the back of my mind and just be like you know I, i'd signed this professional sevens contract and in my heart i knew i probably wasn't going to be able to do it but uh, the coach at the time was like just sign it we'll talk about it later and that was the right decision because it was like actually let's just take any doubt about it so on the world cup final i knew that was my last game but obviously tricked myself saying it wasn't because otherwise it'd be far too emotional i wouldn't have played how i should play i'd have been at mind elsewhere so I was just like, cool, just another game of rugby, go out, play. And when the final whistle went, I just cried. And I, I'm not a crier, but yeah. obviously I was happy that we'd won. So it's like happy tears of crying. But also I was like, oh, I'm never going to do this again. And uh, that was quite full on. Because there's a great photo of it, actually, where there's just so many emotions going on in my face. Someone's just yeah. caught that moment. But um, but yeah, so um, I think that 
yeah, it would. I got told basically even before the World Cup, you should probably retire because you don't know what it's going to do to you when you're older and stuff. Yeah. And with all the stuff that's come out since, uh, yeah. I think right decision to retire. But um, but yeah, shame. Shame, but still, what an amazing career! And you had nearly what sixty caps, scored nearly as many tries. Yeah, so yeah, nearly fifty-eight and forty-four, I think. Yeah, yeah, it's not bad. That. So, <laughs> what happened then? So, the the point you kind of come to terms, you said, "Look, this is my last game." You probably yeah. had that kind of World Cup hangover, literally, figuratively, in all, all senses of yeah. the word. Bit of a party. <laughs> And then a bit of a reflection. Yeah. Did you? Where did you go from there? Did you go straight into the the fitness career, or did you kind of try? Yeah, and- so I went into uh, commentary. Um, yeah. So that was great because you still felt involved. I was commentating on my friends, um, and like it just felt really good to be there in your own right, yeah. um, rather than just suddenly going to spectator, which is very hard when you've been playing to then yes. go and watch. In it's just a very different vibe. Should I used to do that? Yeah. Um, so yeah, did commentary. And then um, throughout my career, it was kind of when we were, it was kind of, it dabbled with professional, but semi-pro and stuff. Yeah. So you, you had your own work. So I'd always done kind of personal training um, outside of it. Um, and then I just kind of went all in um, on that. And then um, that's kind of really developed. And now I do kind of um, body transformation programs uh, during, basically during lockdown, you know, when you weren't allowed to like see anyone face to face, kind yeah. of took it on a different route and all went online. Yeah. And um I, I just love it because I think because I'm so competitive I'm able to put that into like that energy into other people to kind of hit their goals and I love it like when someone can like um you know we, we've chatted before and when you can make a huge difference to someone's life like when you have somebody that's lost 22 kilos and they're now like oh I never had the confidence to go to the gym before but now I'm in there and they're sending me selfies of themselves yeah, in the gym and it is great and there's I think there's no better kind of career like I don't think really like afterwards so yeah I'm, I'm loving you, it so you've obviously always kept yourself in incredible shape do you ever kind of find it difficult working with clients that perhaps aren't motivated as motivated as you because you're I mean to reach to do, achieve what you've achieved you're incredibly motivated to stay in the shape you've stayed in incredibly motivated but not everyone is blessed with that level of motivation so is that is that a challenge for you with your kind of personal training coaching side of things uh, no, because I think that when people come to you, it's because they want to change. So like you're helping them to do that. So you've got to be empathetic about it. And yeah, they're not going to come at it at the same um, energy level, possibly that yeah. I I might do or kind of because um, I remember actually going to, you know, when you go to like an exercise class, I remember going and um, I'm not that energetic in the morning. So I just don't, I, you know, I'm not a morning person. And this uh, instructor was like bouncing off the wall. She was really like hyper and I was like, oh, rain it in. <laughs> like, so, like, yeah. It was great. But actually, I got some of her energy and I was a bit lifted. Yeah. So I think it's just uh, whatever works for the person, I think. Yeah, no, I think that makes sense. And yeah, to do what you can. If you need to fake it with a few extra coffees, let's make it Yes, yeah, yeah, coffees all the way in the morning, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. And uh, in terms of then your focus moving forward, so... The personal training side of things, are you doing that more face to face now? Things are kind of back to normal ish, or are you still pushing on with the kind of the online transformation side of things? Yeah, it's the online transformation I've done. So I realized actually you can help a lot more people rather than just, oh, okay, who lives around me? Yep. Um, it's okay, actually, you know, I've got clients from all over the place. I've got one at Mumbai in the minute, at the minute. Um, nice. Sorry, and you get people that are traveling. And I think it's looking more, and, and whilst I love, PT in the face-to-face sessions um you know I actually get to work with people's like lifestyle kind of looking at step count looking at actually um, a more kind of for want of a better word kind of a holistic approach like how much sunlight are they getting just just things like that actually are going to make lifestyle changes as well as the nutrition uh, obviously because nutrition is such a huge part of any kind of transformation um, especially when you're looking at strength uh, and things like that you need to nail your nutrition to kind of obviously you know get get that right um so yeah by doing the whole of it like I just enjoy the results and the changes it makes for people's kind of confidence and, and everything like that yeah I mean I, th- I think if it's that transformation knowing that you can positively impact people's life is what drives you and motivates you for you to be able to yeah. do that in a way that's more scalable and you to impact more people is is obviously a good yeah, uh, yeah online yeah yeah people. definitely cool and, and is that something that you're, you're kind of actively taking on new clients as well if we do have a, a load of our audience say, look, she sounds great. She's got great guns. I want some of those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
yeah yeah definitely taking on new clients um so yeah so if they want guns yeah like <laughs> that's something yeah definitely get in touch cool and uh, how, how is it best for them to get in touch with you just uh, in case we do get a few people get asking us um your your instagram handle obviously that's yeah instagram perfect yeah instagram twitter any of those really or i've got i've actually got a free um facebook group um as well um kind of elite weight loss one that uh community so people could go up to that as well so yeah any of the kind of social media platforms perfect well when we post this up obviously we give you a a tag in instagram anyway facebook but if you just comment any groups of the things that you think would be useful yeah please do yeah okay great yeah perfect all right, well, I think we've got a really good feel for kind of your background, which is obviously very impressive and, and where you're going. Are you ready to be putting us some pressure with the, uh, the killer questions? Yeah, I think so, yeah. <laughs> He's going to be going all over the place. We're going to change pace. Some will be easy, some will be hard. Okay. We're going to start easy. Biggest yeah. achievement. Um, winning the Rugby World Cup. I thought that would be the case, but I thought I'd ask the question. Uh, <laughs> yeah. What about yeah. your, um, your biggest goals kind of moving forward? Um, I think to help as many people as possible and just kind of, yeah, I think that help as many people as possible and make a positive impact and kind of give back in that way. Yeah. What's the most common mistake you see from people that you train? Um, oh, at the minute, I'd say um, everybody just go in full intensity, hit mode all of the time, not letting their body recover, not focusing on kind of more resistance training and kind of a balanced approach. So I think being obsessed with hit, nothing wrong with hit, I love it. But when you're doing it every day and you want, then you're wondering why you're tired and fatigued and stuff. So I'd say that. Yeah. And also eating too low calories. A lot of people coming to me in under a thousand calories and then they're wondering that. why they're not getting any gains. And you're like, because I'm genuinely yeah yeah i'm on three thousand calories at the minute people don't believe me but i'm like <laughs> yeah so that i think yeah. yeah no i think that's certainly something that that i've seen a lot and i speak to people yeah. and like why why are the results not good why am i not gaining muscle why am i not getting more ripped but yeah. your calories are yeah. so low you've just got no fuel your workout quality is probably not brilliant anyway because you're going yeah. into the workout under fueled yeah and yeah and that, also again sorry you go i was gonna say you, you mentioned that um Okay, on people doing hit every day do you mean like literally every day and having no days off yeah or just that it's the only training that they do so yeah. when you go full send all the time and i've been guilty of this like i'm um i've had to really work on sort of my aerobic capacity of um you know working say doing five rounds or something and all of them being the same time rather than yeah. doing my first one full out then kind of gassing out afterwards so I think people just start to, um, their bodies just don't recover. And as you said, when you're wanting to build muscle mass, muscle mass is way more metabolically active. It's kind of great um, strength training. There's just so many benefits to strength training. And when people are only going high intensity, they're not allowing themselves to kind of get that side of it as well. So it's kind of changing people's mindset to look how many calories I burnt in this half hour to going, okay, yes, but now let's see how many we can burn in long term and increase the metabolism and uh, things like that. Do you get a lot of people that this isn't necessarily a quick fire question, we're just interested. Do you get a lot of people yeah. that come into you that want to lose quite large amounts of body fat and gain large amounts of muscle at the exact same time? And yes, yeah. So you um so I think building a base layer of strength within it and getting them to kind of understand that actually by building that kind of muscle, the overall long term is you're going to be changing your body fat composition. So it's, it's trying to get people to think of it rather than fat loss, thinking of is it changing body composition is that one of my main kind of things that I've got to get across to people. Definitely. Yeah, that makes sense. What would the advice be for 18 year old you? What would you say to yourself now with your wisdom? Oh, I love it. Um, I keep going, even when it's really hard, even when you've had those injuries and you've got self-doubt, just back yourself and go for it. Cool. Uh, and actually, this is related, but in terms of when you've had big injuries, not necessarily the, the concussion ones that yeah. cause your career, but when you've had major injuries kind of during your career, how, how do you stay positive? How do you keep yourself working hard and not kind of go into a bit of a rut? Um, well, so with this one, so I did my ACL when I was like 19, just been capped and, um, you know, it was pretty gutting, but I was like, I know I'm going to get my left hand pass to, uh, even better. I'm going to use it as an opportunity. Um, so actually now my natural hand is left-handed because yeah. I did so much work in that injury yeah. time. I came back on my first game, broke my other leg. 
And that was hard. That was really hard. And I did sort of go into, well, what's the point? Like, I can't, like, th th this is just going to keep it's, happening. It's back, back ones that the, the tricky ones, aren't they? Because you kind of mentally prepare and you know you're out for a long yeah. time and you come to terms with it and then you've got that instant yeah. setback. Yeah, and it's, and that was that was really hard. So actually, um, it was three years between my second cap and my third cap through two wow. injuries and then playing for the A's and stuff. And that third cap to me sort of meant almost more because of what yeah. you've gone through. Yeah, to go. but it worked so hard. But yeah, and then I guess it's timings of injuries as well. I did my elbow, um, so I did. I don't know if you don't want like mega scars, um, but. Um, I did that just after the Sevens World Cup, just before the 15s World Cup. And because it was, you know, it was a five month injury and I had three months to get back. So you're just like, the focus you have to have is yeah. just so extreme that you just can't miss your rehab. You can't, um, you, you've just got to do everything you can to, to get there. Yeah. It's almost like you've planned my next questions, but Sevens okay. and 15s, <laughs> yeah. which is your favorite, Sevens or 15s? 15s actually yeah. which is yeah surprising I think a lot of people think it's sevens but 15s because it's the kind of for me it was where I spent most of my time as a kid playing yeah. it I've got most of my friends from there so yeah 15s and what would you say is physically more demanding sevens <laughs> absolutely horrid <laughs> savage just so savage I remember um, someone kicked it I sprinted after it and then they kicked it back and I sprinted because everybody's so fast I think at 15, sometimes as the wing, like you, well, you should be the quickest person, but at sevens, everybody's rapid, so you don't get that break. Um, yeah. So yeah, 50 sevens is just, right. and if you get a knock on game one, and then you've got like three more games, it's just, oh yeah, brutal. Yeah, it's, it's absolute madness. Um, who is your favorite player in today's game? It's a um, horrible question, I know, because you have to shout someone out and let down so many people. Yeah, I actually, I'm going to go with Meg Jones um, because she's a sevens and fifteens player. Yeah. She's wasp um, fly half. She can play so many different positions, but she's just very exciting. And I think that w we're going to see big things from her because she's just a player that plays with no fear and she's got the distribution as well. So uh, yeah, I'd say she's up there with kind of um, exciting kind of players. Um, yeah, I'll go with her. What about your toughest ever opposition player? And that could be club or country. Um, I would go with um, uh, any of the Kiwi girls. Um, <laughs> they're all like Portia Woodman, absolutely savage. Um, so we, I was actually with Portia Woodman in Hong Kong. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. She's, yeah. she's built. She's a. Uh, she's so built. Muscular yeah. legs. Yeah. Yeah. I, thought, I kind of met her, yeah, but I was like, I need to put some trousers on. She's showing me up. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think it's when someone's like, if you've got just an absolutely rapid winger, you're like, okay, if I get my angles right, I've yeah. got them. And she's if you cool. get just a power wing, you're like, okay, just get in front of them because I'm quicker. But when you've got someone quick, footwork, power, everything, you're just like, oh, God. But yeah. um, so, uh, yeah, probably Portia. Portia. She's lovely off the pitch, isn't she? She's such a, like, a nice kind of gentle person, but on the pitch, she's an absolute beast. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Um, what would you say sets you apart from a, a coaching perspective? Like why would someone choose you over someone else? Um, I think the fact that I'll give a lot, I, I think empathy is a big word that I'm going to be very supportive, but also I'm going to hold you accountable because you've told me what goals you want to hit. I'm giving you the best platform to hit them. I'm also going to kind of um, give you a bit of kick up the ass to get there as well. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, think that, I think that's great. I think that's important, isn't it? Because I think everyone has those yeah. days when, they can't really be bothered. Sometimes it needs a kind of a, an arm around them to kind of say, look, come yeah. on, you're all right. And other times it needs a bit of a kick up the bum. But ultimately, yeah. they're doing it for their benefit because they ultimately get that satisfaction from hitting their goals. So you exactly. want to help them. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Uh, Favourite exercise? You can only choose one. Oh, um, like as in one sort of like... Yeah, just, just one single one single movement. I'm thinking more weights, actually. Cleans. Oh, yeah. you say not weights. No, yeah, 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 right. yeah. I'd go with um, cleans, power clean. I think, cleans yeah, because there's just so many. Yeah, explosive. There's loads of elements to it. It's technical, yeah. but you can really see games. So yeah, I'd go with the clean. Yeah, nice. This is a bit of a rude question, but I think you're a good person to ask. Okay. What's, your, what's your body fat percentage? Um, do you know what I don't actually I know? That it. Um, really ripped. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. When I was playing, I think it was about. Uh, I don't know the percentage, but it was like, you know, you do your body fat, um, your skin folds, it was like 50. 
terms yeah. are pretty, pretty low, uh, but I think I'm possibly leaner than that now. I was going to ask, actually, are you in better shape now than you were in your kind of, say, rugby prime? Yeah, I think I am, actually. I've got more kind of muscle, lean muscle mass, I'd say, whereas for rugby, you kind of need that extra. I mean, it was never padding. I wasn't huge, but, you know, I'm probably five kilos lighter now. I'm retired, but hitting the same kind of strength one, so yeah. relatively stronger. So, yeah. yeah. Um, final question. How do I get biceps like you? What's your advice for you? <laughs> your biceps look pretty good, to be uh, fair. Oh, so. right, but I think you're definitely putting me up to shame. <laughs> yeah. I've never had a really good bicep vein, and I think that's probably a combination yeah, uh, of maybe a little bit less muscle mass than I'd like, but also probably just body fat percentage. Yeah, so the veins is the thing that I do. Like, I, um, I seem to have those quite prominently, but I think, yeah, it's just kind of... Um, I just do quite a lot of weight and um that kind of helps obviously but um I do love a rower as well and that kind of um like yeah yeah and then um, recently got into CrossFit so that kind of kind of vibe of like pushing yourself so yeah but I'd say definitely your biceps are there <laughs> thank you it means a lot <laughs> yeah, okay. um, that's it yeah no it's been really great uh, chatting to you we always finish yeah. with a, a mandatory compulsory bicep tense off so you can take us up with a bicep pose and show off your, your hard work. Strong, strong. It was lovely, it was lovely chatting to you. Um, and yeah, we'll get this up yeah. online and we'll share it fairly soon. And you, brilliant.